Hello, everyone. Welcome to the first webinar of WSO2 Integration Studio 2019 series. I'm Dakshika Jayatilaka, technical lead at WSO2. And here with I have Surudana, who is an architect at WSO2 Enterprise Integrated Team. Let's have a look what's on today's agenda. We are having what's new in the WS2 Integration Studio, and the, there's a demo. Then we are going to introduce the, our uh, VS Code extension and including some future improvements. When we talk about the next generation of integration tooling, these tools need to be drastically improve the productivity of developers while enhancing the developer experience. So the, the life cycle of integration flow is not a single step. We need to think about building, running, testing, and debugging the, their applications when they are developing. It. And finally, they need to deploy the artifacts into the real servers. With the rapid change in the container native environment, developers may need to do the DevOps, DevOps jobs as well. And same time, they may want to create Docker images, Kubernetes artifact, and they want to deploy those into the cloud as well. Not only that, they may want to automate the process with the continuous integration and continuous deployment process. So the WS Integration Studio will provide a sleek and unique experience while catering the next generation needs to the integration developers. So if we talk about the packaging and distribution of our application, the tools in, with the integration uh, tooling, we had an Eclipse-based tool. So you have to install the Eclipse, and on top of that, you need to install the features of the WS2, WS2 Developer Studio. But with this new integration to studio, it's a brand new and WS2 branded standalone application. So you didn't want to worry about anything behind the Eclipse. So when you are starting with the Eclipse, it, it, you need to worry about the JDK and the configuration servers and many more things. But with this new packaging and distribution, we have embedded the added top on JDK with the integration studio. At the same time, we have integrated the WSA2 micro integrator chip by default. So you didn't want to worry about these things on the latest releases. At the same time, when we are focusing the developer's experience, we have revamped the whole set of things within the studio. So if you have previous experience with the other previous tool, developer studio, you may have seen something like this. But these things are drastically improved with the developer experience. We came up with the new theme, icon, color scheme, and different perspectives, icons, and those, everything has to be changed to seek the, and make the productivity and the improvements of the developers. At the same time, we have came up with the new user onboarding process. So this getting started guide will help users to start their uh, applications very easy way. So we, have, we came up with the set of uh, starting templates these templates include in the most of the EI patterns. You can search those things and you can uh, read the information about those patterns and you can start from those templates. At the same time, we have categorized different uh, sections like ESP project, DS project, and DP project, etc. So developers can easily identify where they can start and what to do the next. So if you start with the template, of integration studio, we have template-based help. So it will automatically open up the project and open the uh, exact files and on the editor and show the template guide on the right-hand side. So you can, you can see the information about the particular scenario and there may be some advanced information how to test this out all this information within the integration studio. So you didn't want to worry about going further with the, some other documentation to find out the information. Not only that, the same view includes some more help. If you think about the uh, properties of the particular mediator 
or maybe proxy. So you can see each of the uh, in properties will show us in the form-based view. At the same time, it has the context-based inline help. So you can hover on the question marks next to the any field and figure out what it actually does. At the same time, tool palette is improved with the new sections, including the icons, and it has details of the particular mediator. So again, you will want to have a prior knowledge to understand what this each mediator do. They can hover on each mediator and figure out what it actually does within the integration studio. Another feature that we have introduced is this intelligence feature. So if you are not much interested on the GUI features, visual tooling, even you can switch with the source view. In the source view, we have the context aware code completion. So when you type, when you select any area and you can you can start you can press the control space bar to identify okay what are the available options within this particular mediator or any other element at the same time this synapse validation feature will give the feedback on the graphical view as well as the source view if you think about the graphical view graphical view contains when you drag and drop the particular media into the sequence flow it will show okay where you can put and where you can't put if you added it to any place with the incorrect uh, incorrect position it will automatically give a warning and say you can't do you can't add this into this particular place so it is very intuitive and you can developers can easily figure out okay these things can't be added inside this area at the same time source view also giving the suggestions if you have done any mistakes with the editor it will show what is the exact error and you can fix by getting the help from this information another great enhancement that we have done with the data mapper is something like this so previously if you have any previous experience with the developer studio this new integration studio include many more features like users can easily identify where to start and where to end their process so if you start with the data mapper they can load the input files easily at the same time they can create their trace uh, they can create whatever the uh, data inputs with easy steps at the same time we provided the capability to the tryout on what they are mapping so if you create any mapping, if you do any transformation, you can try out the exact uh, information with this below view. So it real time data mapped and you can, uh, you can add and change your uh, input data and see the real time output before you are uh, putting that into the server. Another enhancement that we have done with this property group mediator. So previously we had a mediator called property mediator. So when you want to add multiple properties, you have to place multiple property mediators in their integration flow. But with this new property group mediator, you didn't want to worry about multiple properties adding in this sequence. So it's just a matter of adding the property group mediator and you can add multiple properties inside of that. So syntaxically, it's something like this. You can add the property one, property two, property three, and their values and do it. Another enhancement that we have done with this expression property editor. When you are selecting a particular X path or any kind of uh, JSON path, previously we didn't have to try out options. But we figure out most of the time developers need to go out from the studio and they may need to use a third party tool to figure out where it actually gives the output or how it works but with this new expression selector they can simply load the xml string xml file or they can manually enter that and select the particular xml path then they can evaluate that uh, and see the output from the studio itself so it's a it's make their life easier and increase the productivity of the developer so now let's we move to the demo of this uh, webinar. So I'll, I'll ask uh, my colleague Isuru to 
continue the demonstration. Thanks, Dakshika. Okay, so let me uh, first explain the scenario we are building today. So this is a very common integration uh, scenario uh, we are building. So basically here uh, we have a SOAP service uh, which gives uh, information about cities, taking the zip code uh, as the input. So we need to expose this SOAP service as a RESTful API to the clients. So what we are going to do is, we are going to bring in enterprise integrator into the middle and from a RESTful API created inside the enterprise integrator, we are exposing a, a, a API to clients. Okay, so, So I have installed Integration Studio, the Mac distribution in my machine. So I'm going to start it. Okay, so I have to give a name for my workspace. Let's say Okay, so this is what we get as the user onboarding screen. So in this getting started screen, we have uh, two options to proceed. So either you can start the project from scratch or you may use a already existing template as the basis for your project and start building upon that. So here, on the templates, we have listed down most of the common integration patterns and integration uh, solutions we are building. Uh, so say for example, you can see there's content-based routing, header-based routing, uh, message filtering, protocol switching. So those are some of the common integration patterns um, we are using while building integration solutions. So, so I'm not going to use any of the templates for this particular scenario. So I'm going to build it from scratch. So let's uh, use this create new option. And let me give a name for this project. So let's say city info uh, project. Click on finished. Okay, so this is what you get. So here in the project explorer, you can see there are two projects got created. One for storing uh, ESB configurations. So other one is the composite application project, which is used to create the exportable archives out of this ESB configuration project. Right, so let me uh, go back to the scenario. So here we have a, a SOAP service so we need to have some kind of a entity which represent this actual soap service inside the esb configuration for that we have something called an endpoint so i'm going to create a new endpoint right click on the esb config project new and then select endpoint then let's go with create a new endpoint option. So there are different kinds of endpoint types. So I'm not going to explain each of these types here. So I'm simply using this address endpoint. So let's uh, give a name for this particular endpoint. Let's say city info endpoint. So I have to give the endpoint URI here. So I have noted down those stuff in a text file. So I'm going to copy that from here. Okay, and paste it over here and click finish. Okay, so you will see the endpoint uh, editor. So here we have the name and the URI and there are some other uh, different set of configurations which you can use to fine tune these uh, endpoint uh, definition. So, so, 
So here we are representing a SOAP service and also uh, what we are going to do is we are going to expose a RESTful API, which means we are accepting a REST request. So, and then we do a conversion and send to this particular SOAP endpoint. So since we are doing a conversion from REST to SOAP, we need to uh, set the format to SOAP11 here. Okay. Right, so I'm done with the endpoint configuration. Now let's go and create a REST API, uh, which is the main artifact we are building here. Right click on the ESP config project, new, and then REST API. Uh, let's see, uh, go with create a new API artifact, and we need to give a name, and let's say CD API. And all APIs are uniquely identifiable using this context. So let me give a context. So I give it as city and click finish. Okay, so we will get something like this. So here we have the API and then we have a, a resource. So we can have one or more resources in an API. So here we are only creating one. So if you click on this resource uh, in the property properties view, you will see uh, the different set of configurations available to configure a resource. Here we are selecting the, uh, the methods as get. So that means we are accepting a get request from the client. So I'm going to, so here, um, so as I mentioned earlier, so in this scenario, uh, this backend service takes zip code as the input. So I'm going to uh, take that zip code from the request itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to take it from the payload. Instead, I'm going to take it from a URI uh, variable. So to do that, let me make this URI style into a template. So let's say the template is uh, lookup slash, and then I am parameterizing uh, the zip code here. So which means when we are sending the request, we need to send to lookup slash and with the zip code. Okay, so that's all what I have to do at the resource configurations. And then, um, Let's uh, do the remaining configurations. So here to invoke this particular uh, service, we need to construct the payload required by that service. And also we need to set the SOAP action. So let me uh, do that. So to construct the payload, we have several options. So here in this palette, you can see there are set of uh, elements over here. So these elements are called mediators. So basically a mediator is the basic unit of processing in ESB. So, so we have different kind of mediators available to construct payload. Uh, one, is a, yeah, one is payload factory and we have XSLT, we have data mapper. So there are several mediators. So for this, uh, Scenario, I'm going to use the payload factory mediator. Okay, so I'm dragging a payload factory and dropping it over here. So in, in the payload factory, we can define the required payload in line. So here, this is the payload. Uh, so I'm going to copy the payload from the text file I have already noted down. So this is the payload expected by the service. Okay, so here the zip code is hard coded. So I have to take it from the request. So I have to make it a parameter. For that I can I use dollar sign and with one. So we can have any number of parameters like $1, $2, $3. Uh, 
uh, okay so that's the payload format and now i have to set how to assign a value to this particular variable to do that i can uh, use arguments so let me add an argument so argument type should be expression because we are dynamically fetching that from the request and then when i click on this so we will get the expression selector so this is something which dakshika already explained to you so this is the expression selector which we have the function to evaluate uh, xml payload and also here we have the option to switch to json uh, uh, path and also we have uh, uh, the expression as well so so here we have some set, set of special functions we can use to uh, uh, fetch expressions so so i am going to uh, fetch this uri uh, variable so for that i am going to use the get property function get property and then uh, uri var dot so the zip code here okay click finish right so i'm done with creating the payload and now uh, let's uh, set the soap action so for that setting the action header we can use the header mediator so the header name should be action and the value i can copy from my visual file okay right so i have set the uh, i have created the required payload and also set the soap action header so now i can simply call this uh, endpoint to do that uh, we can use the call mediator so i'm dragging a call mediator over here and you can drop it uh, to the canvas so when i'm dragging you would notice that the cursor get uh, get a sign which is in uh, uh, yellow color and sometimes it get uh, green. So the green means you can drag it to this place, but if it is become yellow, that means you can't drag it to this place. So, okay, so I'm dropping it to the correct place. And now we need to connect this call mediator with the endpoint which we created previously. So that is, they are in this define endpoint section. So I'm taking that and putting it over here. Right, so uh, we have uh, created all the elements we need to, uh, we need for invoke this particular service. So so here, when you invoke the SOAP service, uh, you will get a SOAP response. So ideally, since this is a RESTful API, we need to uh, convert that to uh, some format like JSON or uh, application XML format. So I'm not going to do that right now. So let me first check whether our flow works. So so let's let's send the re uh, the response back to the client using the response mediator. So I'm dragging it and putting it over here. Right. So let's see whether this flow works. So now we can. Uh, select the project and simply click on run then we can select the project and click finish so this will start the embedded micro integrator in instance in the integration studio right so you can see it start in split seconds so now let's try to invoke the api so i'm going to use uh, client like uh, curl so ttp uh, local host so this is exposed over 8290 and then i gave the context as city and then lookup and then a zip code 
So I'm giving some zip code. Okay. All right. So I got a bad request response. Okay. So let's see what uh, went wrong. Okay. So I will take this opportunity to demonstrate the debugging capability of our uh, integration studio. So let me start in debugger mode. So let's uh, select the project. Okay. Okay, so now it started in uh, debugger mode. So let me put a breakpoint here. So we can right click and select toggle breakpoint and another breakpoint over here. And then uh, let's try to send a request and see what happens. Okay, so it will ask to switch the uh, perspective to debugger perspective. So I said yes, then we will get here. So you can see in this perspective, we have the, the message payload here, and we also have a, a different kind of properties available in the message context in the variables. And also you can see this header mediator is uh, having this red square that means uh, we are we have hit this particular mediator so let's try to uh, step over into the next mediator right so let's see uh, what went wrong so since we got bad request so that means uh, something went wrong with the request we are sending okay let's see the request okay so you can see that zip code is not set so maybe something went wrong with our mediator configuration. So let me uh, switch back to my uh, ESP configuration editor perspective. And maybe we can uh, see the entire source using the source view. Okay, let's see if something has went wrong. Okay, here I'm assigning the variable and getting the property. Okay, so there's a typo there. So that might be the reason. So I'm going to save it. Let's try out again. Let's click on the run button. Finish. Okay, let's wait until the server boots up. Okay, it started. Let's try to invoke it again. Okay, so now I got the correct response. Right, so let me switch back. Okay, so let me take this option to uh, demonstrate some of the uh, uh, stuff we included in this uh, source view. So as you will notice, so there are a set of uh, operators we can uh, apply while uh, we are doing the mapping so right so here you can see there are a bunch of operations like we have string operations like concat split to lowercase to uppercase and there are arithmetic operations so there are various kinds of operations available so i'm not going to use any of these operations for this particular scenario so i'm going with this mapping so let me uh, explain this uh, real-time data mapper preview. So basically, when we are doing the mapping, we can test it without deploying it to the, uh, the server. So basically, we can uh, try out here. Let's put some uh, value. See, it's getting mapped. So that is uh, about the real-time data mapper preview. Okay, so I'm going to close this uh, data mapper configuration editor. Uh, and then, okay, so I'm going to save it. And then let's, let's try out. Okay, so let's click on run. And then I have to select this uh, registry project as well. Then click finish.
Okay, so let me okay. Okay, so now we can see the JSON. Okay, so uh, that's uh, the scenario we try to implement using this integration uh, studio, which is a very simple scenario. So uh, I'll hand over to Nakshita uh, to continue with the presentation. Thank you. Let me continue with uh, another set of features that we have implemented with this WS2 integration studio. So another feature that we have in this is connector store. So in the connector store, we have added the new features of listing of the existing connectors. Right now we do have uh, 180 plus connectors within the connector store and you can search the existing connectors from this view so when you create on the project and you can right click on the project and you can import any connectors you can see this particular view so you can once you hover on the each particular connector you can see the description of it and you can see the versions and maybe all those information are within this view and you can add the connectors very easy uh, than previous versions. At the same time, when you are developing the project's artifact, and again, you need to deploy these artifacts into the servers in a different format. So if you are thinking about the container-based environment, so we are having the Docker support in, embedded within the integration studio. So it's just a matter of clicking the project export and you can generate the docker images so if you if you right click on the project and click on the generate docker images you can see another view including you can provide the additional information of the docker image application version tag and the image of the docker uh, so and again this will uh, this will give two options one option is you can export the uh, docker image as a tomboy and you can upload that into the different servers if you want and again if you are having the inbuilt uh, installed docker this will automatically push the docker image to your local registry so if you generate this docker image successfully it will automatically available within the your docker registry you can see the docker images the added docker file will automatically show in this view at the same time not only the docker image creation we have embedded the integration cloud into the studio as well some of you may already know about the integration cloud we have introduced the integration cloud some time ago but we didn't have any uh, inclusion within the studio to uh, develop the artifacts here and automatically push that to the integration cloud but with this new release we have embedded another option you can simply deploy the integration application into the uh, integration cloud within one minute so if you click on the deploy into the integration cloud you may get a window with the integration cloud authentication so if you are ha already having an account you can enter your organization key, which actually generated by the integration cloud itself. You can go to the integration cloud and your account organization information, then you can take the organization key from that. And after that, if you enter your credentials and you can simply log in with that. But again, if you don't have an account, we have sign up link, you can simply click on the sign up and you can create your new integration cloud account as well. Once you log in, it will automatically show whatever the existing applications in your integration cloud as well. Again, you want you have you you have two options. One option is you can create new application. At the same time, you can create the new versions of existing application. So you can deploy whatever the artifacts that you develop within the uh, integration studio and push that as these two options. 
So you need to give the application name, application version, you can add description, icon, and you can add text as well. So basically, whatever the information that's within the integration cloud is available inside the studio now. So once you deploy the application, you can get the notification inside the studio as well. At the same time, this will add this application will automatically deploy to the WSO2 card. So this feature is very useful when you are trying out and testing out your integration with the cloud, WSO2 cloud, and you can get all the information without leaving the studio itself. So this will make the developer experience unique with this new tooling. Not only that, we have a set of additional improvements that we added into the integration studio. As you have seen in the demo, we have enhanced property. What does that mean is if you click on the any particular mediator or a proxy within the graphical to, uh, view, you can see the properties of that particular mediator below on that. And again, each uh, property will be listed in the form-based view rather than the tabular in the view and in the previous versions. So this is, this is very easy to uh, use, use in the development environment because it's just a matter of clicking the properties or selecting options. And again, uh, in, in context, help will give the guide what to do with these properties. At the same time, default values and the missing properties also get loaded within this improvement. So example, if you are adding any database into the uh, database or maybe JMS into your integration flow, though there are a set of sensible defaults that needs to be loaded and when you are doing the things. And again, some, some properties are you didn't want to worry about, even you didn't want to change when you are doing the basic flows. So all those sensible depots will automatically added by the uh, integration studio. So developers didn't want to worry about those too much. At the same time, we have improved that tool palette, like we are giving the tool tips, we are giving the in-context help on that. Uh, we have categorized and we have improved the uh, icons of those color schemes, those graphical experience also enhanced with that. Another new feature that we have added is dependency job resolving capability. So that capability, again, is very useful when you are using any third party jobs. So as an example, if you are using a DB lookup mediator, you may need to download many, uh, sometimes maybe MySQL or maybe Oracle, some other third party journals. So now we have an option. You can simply click on the configure and select the particular uh, dependency or particular selected driver, DB driver, and system that the integration studio itself, you, it will automatically download and put it in the right place. So this will make much more easier to the developers because they need to worry about downloading that manually from another site and putting the correct driver class name, etc. So all these things automatically handled by the integration studio. At the same time, we have fixed many issues including this concurrent resource loading optimization. So now when you are start with a small even small and the larger uh, integration flow if you are opening a larger project it will uh, it will greatly enhance with the loading time and it will handle uh, very in a very good way within the integration studio so not only that, we have come up with a new way, new way of doing the uh, integration studio coding. So we introduce VS Code extension. So if you visit to this URL, bit.ly slash WSO2 VS Code, you can download our latest uh, support for the uh, VS Code. So why we are adding this? Because if we are talking about the next generation of tooling some may people still prefer some developers prefers to have use their own uh, tooling like 
their own uh, versions of coding like they are trying to use existing editors to do their development so as you know vs code is the one of the most popular code editor by the developers last year so we think of giving the option they can do the uh, code level implementation using this vs code plugin and it has multiple features supported so main feature is supported interstings we, we are having a language server that it will automatically provide the context of your code completion. At the same time, it will include code diagnostics. So, so again, even this uh, VS Code plugin is in the beta state, uh, you can get all these features. So this context of our diagnostic error shows the what to do with the this particular uh, code block and what to change, etc. So another feature that we have added is this go to definition option. So if you are having multiple sequence in your flow, it will automatically support it once you can you can simply click on that and you can go to the particular uh, definition. So developers are now to use this command palette in the VS Code. So we follow the same pattern, so they can use the command shift P to open the control panel and command panel, and they can create the projects, they can create the files, they can create whatever the supported artifact from within using the VS code. And even finally, they can create the deployable archive using this VS code plugin. So let's move to the find sections of our webinar so if you think about the future improvements even we are continuously fixing and improving the developer productivity while enhancing the developer experience in order to do that we are supporting uh, integration test framework what we can do is they can continuously uh, they can write their own test cases and they can do the testing within the tools itself so the this feature will help them like if they are modifying this they can easily they can uh, so they can do the uh, they can they can avoid the regression when they're doing the changes into the existing flow and there's another request from the customers and most of the developers they they like to have this data service editor improvement. So in the upcoming releases, we are improving the data service editor and the usability of that as well. So we have planned many more features in upcoming releases. So again, if you want, if you are interested in learning more about our the integration studio, you can join to our webinar series. You can go to this bit.ly slash wso2 tooling url and you can subscribe to our next upcoming webinar so next upcoming webinar is on 20th of june 2019 it's on the container native and cloud-based enterprise integration thank you very much for the uh, participating with this and again if you're having any questions we are willing to answer that questions right now So we got a couple of questions. So the first one is, uh, will this migrate to Ballerina? Is Ballerina still on the future part of WS2? So Ballerina will be included as a profile or a separate distribution of enterprise integrator in the upcoming uh, enterprise integrator 7.0 release so uh so it is definitely uh on the future path of wso2 and also in ei as well so which will be uh, available uh, by uh end of q3 probably so so uh, so the question related to the migrate uh, ballerina path so basically we are 
we are working on implementing migrators from uh, Synapse into Ballerina as well. So, but uh, Ballerina, so definitely going to be uh, one of the greatest uh, enhancements or greater, greater uh, uh, integration solutions we are going to uh, provide in the enterprise integrator product. So can custom templates be added by the studio developer? So that's the next question. So right now we don't have that functionality uh, in the studio. So I think that's a very good addition we can uh, uh, bring into the studio. So there's another question asking, can custom operations be added? If, uh, if I'm not that clear on the question, so I guess uh, the question is on uh, doing some validation kind of thing. So I believe, uh, yeah, so, so let me give you a uh, general answer. So if so, uh, from integration. Uh, so so uh, I'm not quite sure whether it's uh, supposed to something related to data mapper. So anyhow, let me give an generic answer for this. So as we all know, so we have set of uh, features which uh, which can be used to build uh, any integration solution. If something is not available there are set of extension points we can use to extend the functionality of enterprise integrator. So definitely if we need to introduce some kind of a custom uh, extension or any kind of custom operator, we can facilitate that through any of the extension points uh, in the runtime. So there's another question asking whether we can use the new integration studio to build ESP project and deploy it to all the EI versions. Yes, we can use it. So, uh, so the most of the configuration, almost all the configurations are backward compatible. Uh, only only exception is the property group mediator is not present in the previous version. But if you are not using that particular mediator when uh, uh, developing new configuration you can deploy all the configurations developed from this particular uh, integration studio into previous EI releases as well. Right, so there's another question on uh, whether we have improved the way of creating uh, data sources. So in this release, we haven't done any improvements into the data uh, sources or uh, data services. So what we are planning and actively working on enhancing the data sources and data services related features in the upcoming in integration studio. So, what was the URL for the VS Code again? So, let me uh, go back to the slide. Right, so, it's uh, basically so to code. So again, you can go to the uh, DS code uh, extension area and you can search the WSO2 uh, in enterprise integrated there and you can download the extension from that as well. So even that is listed on the VS code market. So you can download that from there. So this is a short URL from the marketplace URL actually. Okay, so there's another question asking, uh, do we have to be on Enterprise Integrator 6.5 to use Enterprise Integrations to, I guess I already answered the question. So, so unless you are using the property group mediator, we can uh, uh, use any of the Enterprise Integration uh, runtime uh, integration studio. 
basically all, almost all the other configurations are backward compatible right so i think that's all we have for questions i think we are almost done uh, okay uh, thank you very much for joining with our education studio webinar series you can sign up to the our upcoming webinars and continue to learn about the our integration studio and about the integration server as well. So thank you very much for joining everyone.